Good morning, church. Great to be with you guys. My name's Kevin. I'm one of the leaders here at Divergent Church, and I want to welcome you from wherever you're tuning in from. Whether you're tuning in from Canberra and your home, whether you're tuning in from uh, New South Wales, whether you're tuning in from Australia, or even the rest of the world, I want to welcome you today. It's great to be with you guys on this platform. Let's continue on our, our sermon series called A Reason for Hope. And today I want to share with you a bit of my testimony and even a few scriptures that God has put on my heart to um, encourage and hopefully inspire you in today. Now I wonder uh, how many of you guys have actually asked this question to God in prayer. God, what is your plan for my life? Now I've asked that many times and especially in the early days of my walk following Jesus as I did not grow up in a Christian home. I want to encourage those people here who have asked that question already. Can I encourage or further encourage you guys to ask a deeper question? And this is this, God, what is your plan for humanity? You know, especially in this um, interesting time across the world, uh, I think so important is to, to continue asking, capturing our heart, the heart of God and what is his plans, despite even, um, you know, maybe darkness or things that might go on in the world. For those who maybe have never asked this question, can I encourage you guys today, or maybe if you're listening, to maybe consider starting asking that question, uh, because this is one of the questions that will uh, anchor whatever changes in our lives through different seasons, through even the tough, through the hard, or even the highs, this question, God, what is your plan for my life, can anchor us uh, in many ways and give us stability and peace and joy, and particularly our sermon series, hope. So my encouragement to you, let's uh, lean in, and I'd love to share with you guys, uh, simply to capture this, I've made many plans in my life, uh, but God's plans are so much greater. I've made so many plans, but God's plans are so much greater. I want to bring you back to a time where, um, you know, uh, I grew up in a Buddhist home. I actually did not grow up in, a, in the church. I grew up in some ways a, a Buddhist and Catholic home. And uh, I did not come to my faith until I was in my 20s, uh, my second year of uni. Now, May two, 23rd, 2012 was when I, I gave my life to the Lord. But before that, you know, I want to give you a glimpse of what I used to put my hope in. The first thing that I used to put my hope in, I put a lot of my hope in my career. You know, growing up uh, with an Asian, in an Asian household, you, those um, who might have parents similar, which I wouldn't be surprised, the pressure is simply this, get good grades, become a doctor, accountant, uh, whatever it is. There's an aspect of uh, high pressures when it comes to career and the focus to put your hope in that was challenging at many times, right? That was one of my focuses. And uh, I actually wanted to become a physiotherapist in the doctor world. Uh, and so um, big pressure. Someone wanted to uh, uh, please my parents in that regard. Another thing I used to put my hope in was um, I actually wanted to become a soccer star. I grew up, um, you know, not really growing up in sports. And when I was 13, I uh, joined a club and grew, grew this passion uh, for football, the world sport. Maybe the sport when Jesus comes back, it's the United sport, as some may say. Uh, I grew this passion and you know what, um, became pretty good to some extent and, and represented ACT, played in other states uh, until a point where I got way too hot headed and um, just went in from some silly tackles and almost uh, broke my knee. After that in the recovery process, um, to be honest, I was not the same and uh, addressing the disappointment, my hope in some regard when I came back and couldn't play the same way at that, at that level uh, was quite challenging. But my hope was really around, uh, I guess, the successes of uh, performance in that field. Another thing where my hope used to come from is uh, stability and security. Uh, our family grew up actually, uh, we came uh, to Australia as refugees from uh, Laos and Thailand. And we literally did have nothing. So when we come into, uh, I guess, where we are now, I thank God so much for the people who have gone before me. My grandparents, my parents, I want to honor them. Um, and they have come a long way for us. But a big emphasis was you need to be stable with a nine to five job. You need to, you know, have a house. You need to secure yourself here on earth. But we know, right, those listening as Christians, that doesn't just end there. Our stability, our security as Christians should be beyond in the eternal, the kingdom of heaven, that when Jesus comes back for all who believe, will find true security in our heaven, heavenly home, you could say. But that was where my security and my hope used to come from. Another thing, uh, and for those who might consider um, something to hope for, 
uh, adrenaline junkies. I used to love the thrill of learning new things, but also getting out there to try new things. Mountain biking, uh, surfing, skating, uh, even jumping out of a plane, you know, you name it, I somewhat did it. That was something that I used to put a lot of my hope in the next thrill or even the next place that I could go to in the world to experience culture and in some ways get this buzz. We know that actually this hope now is only short filling. And this, as Christians, we know um, there's more to life than this. This became so apparent to me, May 23rd, 2012. I was actually studying over in America. I got a scholarship to go study there, my second year of university. And my plans were simply to go party six nights a week uh, and have an amazing time, meet some amazing people and find the next thrill. But as I made these plans, guess what? God had greater plans for me even when I did not know it. Come to the point where I'd finished my study and on May 23rd, I needed a place to stay. Uh, and so I reached out to a friend who I knew who was only two hours away. Funnily enough, one of my best friends here in Australia moved to Kansas out of all places too. God's plans? Coincidence? I don't think so. Kingdom incidents is what I call it. And anyways, um, as a non-Christian, I uh, you know, came to the point he offered for me to stay um, as a place where God was closing doors and I had no other choices. He did say to me this though, okay, if you can, I'm happy to, you're welcome to stay with me. The only thing is I'm at a Christian conference for this weekend and I really need to be there. As I had other plans to go party that time as well, um, he was my only option, so I stayed. I find myself at this Christian conference and I tell you what, um, I didn't want to be there. However, uh, there was a moment in time where my friend actually reached out to me and uh, Eli said to me, he said, you know, you noticed there was something that God was doing in my life and I had everything together on the outside, but deep down there was something still missing. This something missing was something greater than the purpose of, you know, the, the thrills and the things I used to seek of this world. There was always something missing in my heart that there was something greater. There's got to be something greater. And he, he reached out to me and shared the gospel to me in this moment. And he said to me, Kev, this is actually crazy that you're here with me right now. And I said, yeah, it is. But he, he, he prophetically said to me, he said, Kev, you know, I want to share with you as a brother, because I love you, the gospel. Well, not really the gospel. He didn't say it like that, but he said, I want to share with you that there is a God who is alive. And when I pray to him, here's the crazy thing, Kev. He speaks back. And this is what he said to me in that last moment. He said, and you know the even crazy thing? You can actually hear him and pray to him too. In the moment, I was like, kind of brushed it off. I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of cool. And I'll consider it. But uh, deep down, there was something it struck in my, in my heart that was like, I think this is what I'm looking for. I went back into that uh, conference and out of 3,000 people in that room, I was pretty much the, the, the only one who wasn't Christian. The preacher comes near the end and wraps up the night. And, and as I'm sleeping, funny enough, um, he's talking about the book of Revelation. He invites everyone up to the stage and, or to come up to the stage to pray for the nation of Israel. Um, flying over my head, I wake up and look at this as a moment and there's something in my heart goes, maybe this is the opportunity to actually reach out yourself. You know, there's a scripture in Zephaniah in the Old Testament that says, those who seek the Lord with an with earnest, honest heart will find him. And guys, this moment was when I found him. I stood up and there was something inside of me. I walked up to the front of the stage. I closed my eyes and surrounded by these, these strangers, I went, God, if you're really real, show me, speak to me. I opened my eyes and I was like, ran back to my seat real quickly. And uh, one of the strangers or this, uh, someone I didn't know turned around to me and said to me, she, she said, hey, this might sound random, but I feel like God's given me a vision for you. Can I share it with you? I went, sure. What have I got to lose? She shared a vision with me, a prophetic vision with me, which was simply this. She said, God showed me that he's shining a light on you right now and that he as a father is really excited to get to know you personally. Inside of me, my jaw dropped and I went, what the? Out of all the people in the room, how did she know I was not a Christian? And two, I just reached out to God to reveal yourself. And how did she know that? Or she didn't know that um, I had reached out to God and God responded back. I could not deny in this moment that God was not that God was real, but there were many things holding me back. And that night, I I pumped my friend with all the the, the hard questions. Eli, what is heaven? What is hell? Um, what is who is Jesus? I need to know. 
that night was when I surrendered my life to God. And the only thing holding me back was simply this. I said to my friend, dude, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can become a Christian. He said, why not? I said, I look at my life. I've done so many bad things. I've hurt many people. I don't think I can measure up to God's standard. And, and his words of encouragement still stick with me today. He said in response, he said, Kev, whoever told you that you needed to be perfect or needed to have it together? When we follow Jesus, we put our, our trust, we surrender to the Lord, and we allow him to transform us from the inside out. We just constantly have to surrender and trust him. And I tell you what, it was like a weight lifted off my shoulders. And that night when I gave my life in that moment, it was like God became so evident and real to me. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and simply it felt like this, this sensational tingling through my fingers and went all the way and filled me my whole body and my heart. And I was crying like a 21 baby, I'll tell you what. Tears of joy, knowing two things. I was forgiven for my sins and that Jesus, the living God, was alive. Now, from here, church, you know, I look forward to that day. And where I am, I'm still based in Canberra. All my hopes and fulfillments are now found in Jesus, the living God. Incredible, credible promise. My career now, uh, you know, I'm not a physio. I'm not a doctor. Uh, what I am now and, I, and what, I, what God's led me to is to become a, a high school teacher. And God has placed me in a position where I get to speak into so many, uh, I have the privilege to speak into many young people's lives to help them also come to know the purpose and the true identity and the plans that God has for them. And that's an incredible place to be in. My dreams and hopes of becoming a soccer star, I'll tell you what, I still love to play, but not at that level. When it was all about me before, now God has positioned and changed my heart to a place where I love seeing people connected in community. And then also in that community, people coming to know the love of Jesus for the first time. That's what he's given me these passions and dreams for. And my hopes now are for people to come to know him in the same way I've come to know him. My stability and security, you know, I know now that the goal of, of, of the hope is not to become secure in owning a house or getting the best job. Now when I read God's word, the focus is the stability that's found in the kingdom of heaven that never diminishes, that is fully eternal. And we can find this through Jesus the living God. When we believe, when we put our trust and security, we don't need to worry because God has laid that before us in the kingdom of heaven. Now, when I think about adrenaline junkies, I'm calling upon you. You know, I still love to do some of these things. I still love to surf. I still love to skate. I still love to, to find the next adventure. But the greatest thing I believe God has given me is the opportunity to invite people on a journey with me, to experience many things, not just of creation, but to find the creator through God's amazing creation. And like you, like you can see behind me, I love experiencing and encountering God in many different ways when I'm in the ocean or, or out and about in uh, his beauty. The pleasures of this world uh, only point us back to the creator. I want to kind of wrap up and start to finish with a few scriptures. And, and here's the first. Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, In their human hearts, uh, humans can plan their course. Hey, did that. But the Lord is the one who establishes their steps. And you know, I love this, uh, I guess, this scripture that talks about the plans that we can have. Maybe for you, wherever you are, you've made many plans over the last two years. Maybe they've been blown up. Maybe the hope that you had to go on that vacation, the hope that you have maybe for that job has not happened because of the many circumstances around you. Can I highly encourage, there's a purpose and reason for that. And I believe that in those moments of disappointment, God is asking us to redirect our hope to him. Is it the job that we put our full hope in? Is it the, the journey or the destination that we put our hope in? Or is it the kingdom of heaven that never vanishes or never depletes? This is the hope that we have as Christians that when we look to God's word, because the Lord is one to establish that within our hearts and our beliefs. When I think of God's plan, in establishing the steps. You know, his heart through all, all of scripture is that every person on this earth would come to know the name of the Lord Jesus. And when I talk about knowing, it's not just a in your head thing, it's a in your heart as well. It's with your life. We can plan 
But those opportunities for us to come to know the Lord in a deeper sense is what I believe that God wants to bring us to. Maybe you're here and you're like, oh, gee, Kev, that's, that's all kind of cool for you, but what about me? Can I highly encourage to point back to God's plan? You know, for those who have never asked that question, God, what is your plan for my life? Why am I here on earth? It is such a deep question that goes into the depths of our soul. And when we continue to ask, or when we start with ourselves first, can I say, we will never be fully satisfied. What is your plan? What, what is this for me? We can start there, but we, we shouldn't end there. Now, when we start to put God's plans first, God's plans for humanity, can I say, even though there's sin, from the start of Adam and Eve, the disobedience, uh, we wanted it our own way. That has never worked. The consequence of sin was death. Death in our relationships. Death in, 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 in the physicalness of us as well. That is not the end goal. Thank God. Thank the Heavenly Father who didn't just leave us there, but He sent Jesus as the amazing demonstration of love. This is our, our solution for everyone here, for humanity. No matter what the brokenness in the world has, when we look to Jesus, we can find a newness, a new life, a new chance. From here, we look to where he's pulling us. The, you know, Revelation talks about the new heavens and the earth, the last book of the Bible. This is an incredible opportunity where, where Jesus has died and risen again from the dead, and he says that he's coming back. And when he comes back, every knee will bow, and that he will make all things in the twinkling of an eye new. All pain, sin, suffering, it will be gone and everyone will look to the name of the Lord Jesus as our Savior. So as we look forward, that's his plan. And I don't know what you're going through. Maybe you have things and you see the, the brokenness of our world. And can I encourage you? Look to Jesus. Can I, maybe that you, you've had plans and you, you're caught up in that disappointment and hope. Can I encourage you? Look to Jesus. He is our solution. He is the one who can make all things new. Because guess what? He's bringing the new heavens and the earth and we will wipe away every tear from our eyes and sin will be no more. And this is the beautiful promise that we have, hey church, that for everyone who believes in the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. Towards this, we can put our trust in this, we can put our hope in this, and this is where I find my hope. And I hope, using that kind of words, that this would bring an encouragement to you. To not just look to your own plans, to look to the plans of, of the, the one true Lord who is, who's come as he has demonstrated it through Jesus as where we can find um, the incredible hope that we have. How about we wrap and pray? Father, we just thank you so much for who you are. I thank you for the amazing plans that you've had, that you loved us so much that you didn't want to leave us in sin, but you sent Jesus. Lord, I thank you for every single person who's listening. I thank you for your plans for us that um, you don't want to just leave us in sin but you have the kingdom of heaven that's coming here on earth as it is in heaven so lord i just pray that our hearts would be softened that our lord we would hear you we would know you not just up here but in our heart that's my hope and i know that's yours too in jesus name amen thanks so much for tuning in um prayers and blessings to you wherever you are and uh have a great rest of the day